Well, when thinking about differentiated thyroid cancer, uh, first of all, t for, to consider the use of TKIs, we really are only thinking about the iodine refractory patient population. So making sure that the patient has iodine refractory disease is number one. But not all comers with iodine refractory disease need to have treatment now. And there are some downsides in terms of side effects and quality of life issues with the tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So you want to make sure that the patient that you're considering for treatment really needs treatment. They should have progressive disease, measurable disease, and, uh, and if they have symptomatic disease, those patients certainly need treatment. Well, so for patients who have iodine refractory disease that's locally advanced, if it's resectable, then resection is the best treatment for them. Mo many patients, however, don't have resectable disease. And then, of course, there's metastatic disease as well. Um, there are, in the United States, two TKIs that are approved for this indication, lenbatinib and serafinib. Um, both uh, drugs were studied in placebo-controlled trials. We don't have a head-to-head -head comparison. However, in the lenvatinib randomized phase three trial, uh, the results were really pretty striking. There was a 65% overall response rate with lenvatinib in this patient population um, and a 15-month improvement in progression-free survival. So that's my go-to drug. So the SELECT trial that randomized patients to lenvatinib versus placebo with a crossover at the time of disease progression um, did have a significant overall response rate of 65% um, in the patients. And even when patients didn't have at least a partial response, most pa patients had disease shrinkage. Um, so that's number one. Number two is there was a progression-free survival benefit that was quite significant by 15 months with lenvatinib compared to placebo. Also in subset analyses, we have seen just recently in a paper published by Marsha Brose in the JCO that there's actually an overall survival benefit for the elderly patient population. So we know that at least in that patient population, there's an overall survival benefit that, that, that is statistically significant. Um, another recent uh, analysis um, showed also that the duration of response um, in the patients who do respond to lenvatinib is really very long. That median duration of response is 30 months. So when patients do respond to lenvatinib, and most do, they respond for a long period of time. There have been some really great advances in thyroid cancer research in the last year. Um, one of the uh, uh, two really important advances I think that we've seen here at ASCO this year are looking at new therapy for anaplastic thyroid cancer, which is a devastating disease. Um, most patients uh, do very poorly and really have no good therapeutic options for them that are currently available. Um, and we studied spartaluzumab, which is an anti-PD-1 antibody in 42 patients with anaplastic thyroid cancer. And we saw in that study a 22% response rate to spartalizumab. And several of the responses were really quite striking and also durable. So there will be more to come. We need more follow-up for that patient population. Um, but that is a huge home run for people with anaplastic thyroid cancer. Um, another huge home run um, that we've seen at ASCO this year is in RET-altered thyroid cancer. Uh, there was a study looking at LOXO-292, which is a highly specific and potent RET inhibitor. This was studied in patients with RET fusion, non-small cell lung cancer, RET fusion, papillary thyroid cancer, other thyroid cancers, other RET fusion cancers, and then in medullary thyroid cancers that harbor RET mutations. And in the thyroid cancer patients, the MTC patients and the differentiated thyroid cancer patients, there were significant responses. In the MTC patients, there was a 45% response rate seen uh, with uh, LOXO-292. And in the RET fusion tumors altogether, there was a 77% uh, response rate. So that's a major hit.
LOXO-292 was designed specifically to inhibit the tyrosine kinase RET. Uh, so it was designed to not be a multi-kinase inhibitor and, uh, and act against other targets such as the VEGFR receptors uh, uh, that uh, are hit by the other drugs that we have in the arsenal, such as for medullary thyroid cancer being vandetinib and cabozantinib. Instead of being uh, a broader uh, kinase inhibitor, it was designed to specifically inhibit RET. And we do know that RET is a, is a driver mutation in the majority of patients with medullary thyroid cancer. And then also the RET fusion, RET fusions are driver alterations uh, in a subset of differentiated thyroid cancers. So uh, there's a very strong rationale, um, both for potency against the driver target and also to have a very good uh, and tolerable side effect profile, as was seen in the early phase one experience. The uh, LOXO-292 phase one study that was presented here at ASCO showed uh, a significant uh, response rate in patients with medullary thyroid cancer that harbor RET mutations. That response rate was 45%. Also in the patient population, the drug was very well tolerated. Most of the toxicities were grade one and grade two toxicities. Uh, the study reached its recommended phase two dose, and that will now be explored in expanded uh, dose co cohort. So espartalizumab is an anti-PD-1 antibody that was studied in a phase one study with uh, dose expansion cohorts. In the early phase one experience, there was a patient enrolled with anaplastic thyroid cancer who had a very nice response. So that prompted uh, expansion to 10 patients total with anaplastic thyroid cancer. Again, responses were seen. So overall, the uh, dose cohort, that, that cohort was expanded to 42 patients with anaplastic thyroid cancer cancer. There's a good rationale for, uh, for the uh, anti-PD-1 antibodies to have activity in anaplastic thyroid cancer. There's a very high tumor mutational burden, for example, in anaplastic thyroid cancer. That may be one of the reasons why we're seeing real responses in that patient population.